Koyanak, Pakala Wifsi, Wongay ni Peak. Temang ako nga, inibet, tena inyo naksud. O kahotik, inyo inyo tena. Asi ilipsi alawin miyo si. Koyanak, aywa ako nga, mani. Hello. I speak my language because that's um, what I, my, that was my first language. I was six years old, um, until the age of six years old, I didn't speak any English. So, um, and I thank you in my language for inviting me to be, to, to your country. And I know a lot of people, I've known Harold for a long time and others, and, um, and, my language is very important to me. I'm one of the last of the generation that speak fluently, write and read it. And so, it's, it's very important. We have a program where our young people can get, um, can start to learn their language. We have a Rosetta Stone program that we provide to each household in our, in our North Slope. And hopefully that will help to revive our language. It ha we haven't lost it. And everybody says bad things about the BIA. But I, for one, they taught me. They educated me. They taught me what not to do when I grew up. <laughs> Growing up in a, in a school, being punished, for speaking your language was very hurtful. But thank God for recesses, because they weren't there. It was too cold for them to go out there to watch us. <laughs> so we spoke our language during recess. Um, and so it's very important to keep that culture alive. Um, and, and education was one of the most important things. I know a lot of people in this room Floyd included, and others who went through this system. And Manishkam was a great school. That's where I graduated from. 1965, in July of 1965, I first went to um, Sitka. We landed here first, and then went to Sitka. And I tell you, one week, I fell in love with a different girl in one week, and they weren't related to me. For those of you who live in small villages, you're all related. <laughs> so I went down to Mount Eskim and said, hey, look, all these girls and they're not related to me. Boy, my heart went fast. <laughs> Boy, that was a lot of fun growing up in Mount Eskim. For four years I had fun. <laughs> and, but um, BIA taught us. Um, by being, by punishing us. We didn't want, we wanted to learn. We wanted to become somebody that they were trying to forge us by, by punishment. It was bad in those days. Having kids have raisins thrown down their mouths. Having kids drink evaporated canned milk without mixing it being paddled for, for saying something in class that was, that was disrespectful to the teacher. But we learned. If we learn, we can go, when we grow up, we can change things. Boy, did we ever change it, didn't we? <laughs> we have anxiety. Thank you for all of you who fought for that fight. We didn't get what we wanted, all what we wanted, but we got what we what needed to be given to us, our land. Without our land, we are nothing. Without our language, we are nothing. Without our animals, we are nothing. When I first went to Mount Eshkam that summer in 65, I was so homesick for seal meat. Very homesick. Very hungry for seal meat. But the natives in Sitka, 
they brought us over a seal. And we skinned it. And we ate it. Boy, that felt good that, that first week after not having seal meat. It was so important at that time for, for that, that brought our people together closer, I think, at that time. Because you all lived the same way off the land. Still do. But things change. Things have changed. In my lifetime, when I was growing up, we'd go out um, hunting. Every summer, the ice would go out. Well, the elders would say, the ice is going out, it's going to bring back animals. Sure enough, they'd come back. All oh, these seals, these whales, the fish, birds, everywhere. Lots of ice. You didn't have to worry about um, um, breaking down. Your, mach your um, outboard motor broke down. You could get on a piece of ice and fix it. Not today. Things have changed. It has warmed in our area. The ice, once it goes out, it's gone for the summer. And, but it stays, it's 20 miles more or more um, to the north. And it's a long ways. And there's no ice in between the shore and the ice for our people to take refuge when the storm comes or whatever happens. Those, it is terrible how things have changed. Our, our, but, but one thing that haven't changed is a love of our land, is a love of our f people. And another thing that really hurts is um, what's happened in the past several years. Suicide. Suicide doesn't know the station in, in your life. It happened to me, my family. I'm a victim of suicide. My son killed himself at age 22. It hurts so bad. It hurts when you have someone you love, someone you raised, to do that to you. So I made a promise to myself. If I ever have a forum, I'm going to talk to people about how suicide hurts not only your family, but everyone around you. It hurts when you have the blood of your son in your hands. And it hurts when that child leaves a child. And what do I say to her? when she's grown up. What am I going to do? So, if you see someone despondent looking, who's down on their, who, who looks really sad, who's down on themselves or something, be rude. <laughs> go, go talk to them. Maybe that life you save that, maybe that person. Who knows? And we need to start talking about it. We can't set it aside. We can't put it behind that curtain anymore. We need to talk about it. We need to talk to our young people how important life is. How our culture is important to them too. So please, I beg of you, when you talk to people, when you see people that are despondent looking, be rude, but in. So I thank you all. Um, there's a lot of other issues that are going to be coming up. But I've, I've, I've worked in natural resource issues for most of my life. I was the president of Royal Cap. I was a vice chairman of the Board of Game. I was in the local bounty commission. 
and um, I was a assemblyman and North Slope Borough Mayor, um, and so I'm. I want to use that experience to to uh, to make some substantive changes in how we deal with issues, um, because I have a lifetime of um, working with people in my in in my life, and. Um, Again, thank you for inviting me to your country. I really missed it when I left Sitka. But then I forgot it rained a lot. <laughs> I tell everybody I was 6'2 when I came, I melted. <laughs> I'm 5'8 now. Um, but thank you for listening. And, and I'm going to do my best to get to know a lot of you. And Maxine, uh, I, um, she used to live in Barrow. Um, she's from uh, Angoon. Um, but she and Joe lived there for many years. And Patsy, her sister, lived there too um, for many years. And, and others that have gone. Walter Jack used to live in Barrow. And um, he, he and I were close friends in Monashkam. Um, and so we're still close friends today. And again, thank you very much for inviting me to your country. Thank you.